Good morning, everyone. Well, if it's morning where you are. So today I just want to give you a little update on what I've been working on for Afterglow. Let's have a quick look. This bust object, by the way, is from Emiliano Colantoni, and it's available on the Blender demo site because you can download a bunch of the splash screen demos if you didn't know that. It's very useful stuff, actually. Maybe I'll just bring up that website quickly. Hang on one sec. Let's bring that up. Blender demos. So let's bring that over. There you go. So blender.org slash download slash demo files on here. There's a ton of different demos you can download, which is brilliant because you think the software is already free and the amount of material available to people is just freaking insane. So here we go. Waspot by Emiliano Colantoni. That's the one I'm using. At the moment, I'm in Studio Cage 7, which is one of the studio environment presets that comes with Afterglow. I've currently been working on some new light textures. So these are things which can be projected onto the ceiling objects or the floor objects or the wall objects, depending on what studio environment you're using because this is seven it's a quite a large one liminal and a bit muted something like six is a bit different it's a very much a floor focused one i think by default now it looks like this but let me just turn off the highlight rings it's quite a moody scene and typically you might just have like a object in it like this but basically the principle for every studio environment is the same that there's a light source which is environmental and physical which can be modified so under the asset light Library that comes with Afterglow, which already has pre-made categories. Under the one by two light patterns, these are the ones which are compatible with the regular studio environments. If you use Afterglow a lot, you'll notice there are a few new ones in here, which I'm still adding to. For example, if I take, well, the, like we've seen the cross one already, but if I drag that in, it's a node group for the shader editor. Under the section floor image, which again is ceiling image for different environments. If I plug in this color, as the vector, and then I take the color output of the node as the emission, then you'll see the cross becomes the floor and it projects light. Then because it's all physical and diegetic, that light is completely reactive with the objects. So we've got cross ones. What else have we got? I'll tidy up these nodes before I update the file, I promise. Or maybe I shouldn't make promises I can't keep. There's a dappled one. This one is more for like being complementary for other sources of lighting. It just gives you a little bit of interesting reflection in the way of small dots. So say, for example, you had a bit of extra light in the scene. I've also got the bust object active there, but that's not the point. The dappled effect is more of just a complementary one. There's a little series of textures called dots, dots and strip, and dots and strip blurred. So the dots is like the dappled, but it's actually providing more light, so it's more functionally useful. So quite a moody one here. You can actually see the object. The dot side and strip is that again, but with a more powerful strip to actually just punch light into the scene. And then finally, there's a blurred version. If you did have something super reflective, say you were using a car model, this actually is brilliant for automotive visualization. But I would say more so if you're using it on a ceiling object. So let me just reset the gradient for that. So let's go to Studio 3. So we've got the ceiling here. Let me bring in the dots and strip blurred. So this kind of thing, Studio 3 is a really basic one because it doesn't even have like the kind of light grid pattern on the ceiling. It's supposed to be like a, a basic plain one when compared to something like Studio One, which has a much more detailed light grid, you see. But here you could imagine something automotive. So if I, I'm not going to model a whole car like in 30 seconds, but just for the sake of showing you a little bit of variability, like if we just made a smooth shape. So I'm just making some curvature quickly and let me give it like a little PBR material. I'm going to name it temp metal. Let's shade that smooth. Then you can kind of see how that works and maybe I can add a bit to the coat and sheen as well. So the point is that it's just like a really brilliant clean pattern to use, especially in things which kind of look like painted metal as well. And if you don't like the environment, I mean, we do have HDRIs in this. You can make your own as well because there's a template camera setup, basically a panoramic camera. You can render out HDRIs in this. I have had a request from someone that says, hang on, would highly appreciate a cheaper pack of just high quality HDRIs of various moods. I can make an HDRI pack if you want me to. I can totally do that. Um, if you want that, let me know what kind of file format you prefer. I know that they're usually in like, what is it, EXR format? I'll look into that. Anyway, if you don't like the environment, you can totally just select everything that makes up the studio, go into the object properties, you see ray visibility camera, hold alt and click on that and it will hide the environment, but you'll still have the lighting effect going. So it's like having a real physical HDRI that you can bounce off and modify in real time. So even if I select the ceiling light and rechange the gradient, it will change dynamically like that. You see here, we can tell that we've got the circular gradient happening there. And if I bring it back, we're back in the scene. 
Okay, let me just reset things. Now display cases, before I move on to that, let me just show you a little bit of this bust quickly because I was just doing a test of something I've obviously done in previous emissive light videos, which was relating to using these rings as light sources. But this time, assigning them to a pivot point, which the camera is also bound to. So if I rotate that, you can see the light source and the camera is migrating. But as we do that, it means that we're getting perfect lighting from every angle in a scene which itself is already providing excellent lighting. So I was wondering about little preset like highlight pivots of some kind. I don't know how to describe it. Not exactly like the studio cages that are already in the pack, but something very quick access that can be thrown in regardless of environment. Because currently with the actual studio cages, they are themselves still an environment. So they have their light sources and a light catcher, but maybe something without the environmental aspect would also be handy. Speaking of the studio cages, their lighting values have also been rebalanced to be a bit more appropriate for like every use case. So I've changed all my resolutions now. And I've kind of balanced them around the fossil object that I scanned in for a recent video. With that in mind, they're slightly more varied now. It's sometimes it's hard to notice the variability, but because there's different light layouts, it allows you to get different types of reflection as well as lighting, which is sometimes harder to see on a matte object, but much easier to see on a reflective one. For example, if I hide the fossil and bring the sphere in, there we go. So you can see the pattern here, studio cage one, we've got the lights around. Number two, it's a different layout. Number three, even more different. Four, got this kind of cross thing going on. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You may also notice that nine has a bit of colorization as well, just to make things a bit more distinct. Okay, now, oh yeah, we're also inside of a studio environment now. So we're used to looking at the spheres in studio cages, but opening the environments also shows the more deeper and complex lighting patterns you get from the actual environmental scenes. Pretty cool. Okay, display cases. So this is something that I don't know if it'll be in the next update. Maybe it will, maybe it won't be there immediately. But this is going to be a good one because this is something I've wanted to do for a while. So in that recent tutorial where we did the museum type environment with the fossil, I was kind of doing a bit of work for Ben as well for a joint project. I might have noted how display cases were something I really wanted to do for Afterglow because I love the kind of museum aesthetic. So what I've done is I've moved that display case test into this Afterglow workspace and the immediate results are good. They can be very moody or colorful it's all balanced we've got some underlighting that provides a bit of color but that lighting itself can be modified on a gradient you see there looks great from the back as well with this rocky lighting as a test i've set up a camera pivot to look around the display i think like pretty much any scan will look good in this also, even though this itself is like a compartmentalized lighting space, it is reactive to the wider environment as well. So again, if I put a different gradient back on it, then it's going to affect what's happening here. Also, the reflections in the glass. So what I would like to do is build a variety of more realistic looking display cases with like shelving and stuff like that. So I don't know if that'll be in the next update, but I was just moved it into my workspace to start testing it. I have enjoyed kind of trying to make things as moody as possible. So if I put this back on the cross thin pattern and get back into this camera, but replace the fossil with a reflective sphere. All right, check this out. I love how kind of alien it looks, you know, a little bit of roughness, procedural noise on there. The reflection of the gradient light on the display case and the actual studio lights on top there. Basically, the reflection complexity is quite great and you'll see that as I change the pattern in the studio it's going to affect that as well so it'd be a really kind of great space for highlighting something technological or alien or whatever you like but I'd particularly like it for demonstrating things that I scan in from like my kind of artifact collection or maybe some of the crystalline stuff but yeah basically the point is there's a lot of experimentation happening I'll let you know when an update is available and what's included in it basically what stuff gets done first until then if you made it this far feel free to check out my resources on curtisold.online slash store you can pick up afterglow and gumroad and superhive please do I just brought a new microscope for my biomedical studies and it's hitting the bank account a little bit if you made it this far put a light related emoji in the comments so I can see if you did make it here and of course if you have any requests let me know as always I primarily make these resources and tools for my own interests and for my own use cases but if you make a suggestion you think will be helpful then I'll definitely consider it just like the HDRI pack I will look into that because I can basically make like a million different types of varied HDRIs so you yeah, have a great day everyone and if you want to stay updated email wise there are two ways you can do that Gumroad you can sign up on my page to the mailing list you'll get emails for product updates and you can sign up to the Patreon even for free and you should get monthly updates as well if I keep up with it so yeah, thanks for watching have a great day and I'll see you next time